Hello, everybody out in Leeds Geeks land. Hey, joining to you, joining one day before Valentine's Day, one day. So make sure you get your stuff for your significant other. We're all trying to be better people, right? Uh, coming to us live from Seattle, Washington, where it's a balmy 43 degrees. Pete Kirby and also joining us will be Jim Papa Bear Renfro, uh, a couple offices behind me. We have Eric Hegg, which by the way, he is done with a 24 hour bug. So it's great to have him back in the office here. And joining us by special guest and by demand, Robbie T. Robbie T, what are we gonna work on today? Man, so uh, we get to work on a couple of things. Uh, we get to work on, on something we call in our world going 3D. Um, basically, really what that means is we, we're firm believers that oftentimes when people give us answers, um, when you hear something, they're giving you a partial truth. Um, and if you just truly think about it, um, there's always more to the story. So really the whole point of 3D is really going deeper into somebody's answer. So today when we're role playing, uh, we're going to be challenging, uh, you know, the, the person playing the role of the ISA to dig deeper into somebody's answer. Um, for those of you that have coached with us, this goes hand in hand with the tell me more mindset. Um, that's really the, the biggest key here. Um, taking somebody's answer and trying to find out the deeper meaning behind it. I think the simplest way to view this is, is kind of like um, uh, an illness. Um, since Eric was sick the last few days, this will work really well. Um, when somebody gives you the first answer, it's usually a symptom. Um, and, and our whole goal of going three deep and going deeper is finding out the cause, um, not just the symptoms, because the symptoms don't really tell us anything. So today we're going to be seeing that with our role play session. And with that, I'll kick it over to you, Jim. All right. So today we're going to go three deep. So Eric is on the hot seat today. So he is first going to call Ryan. Ryan is going to be an expired call. And then Eric is going to be calling me afterwards. Uh, and then from there, Robbie T is going to give feedback. Um, so feedback will go like this. Basically, I'll I say, Eric, what was your feedback? He'll give him his own feedback. And then Robbie and I will give him some feedback afterwards. So with that in mind, Eric, why don't you take us off and call Ryan? He is an expired call. All right. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. Hello. Ryan? Yes. Who, who's this? This is Eric Hegg with Hatch Realty. I was calling about um, your home at 123 Main Street. I, I just saw that uh, it expired today and uh, wanted to see what, what happened there. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, 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 ex it expired today. Um, yeah. Okay. It, how, did, how did you get my number? How do you know that it's expired? Uh, it's it's uh, public information, and I just wanted to see. You know, it looks like a a great home. Uh, why do you think it didn't sell? Uh, you know, I I don't know. I, gosh, it, you know, we did we did showings and stuff, and you know, I I guess uh, you know, I I guess I don't know why it didn't sell. Okay. Yeah. Usually, it's price condition or or marketing. Uh, which one of those do you think it was? Um. Gosh, Eric, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, if I were to make a snap judgment here, I would say I was a little bit unhappy with the way it was marketed. Okay. What do you mean by that? Can you tell me more about that? Well, the, my, my realtor only took about 10 pictures or so, and I ended up taking about five of my own because I'm, I, need to, I need to get this place sold. Okay. Why is that? The Why did I use my own camera? I don't know. Maybe the, he didn't want to... Uh, um, use his camera? I, I guess I don't know. Okay. Yeah, and you you sound like you're pretty eager to to get it sold. Uh, what what's driving your timeline, right? Well, I I need to get in, uh, in into a, a house with a bit more space. Okay. Why is that? Well, um, you know, it's a, a more space to you know to, to be able to to put different things and have more bedrooms and, and more space for the for the wife and I. Okay. Gotcha. Um. Yeah, and when are you uh, hoping to make that move by, Ryan? Um, sometime probably within the next eight months or so. Okay. And um, is there something, you know, why, why eight months? Um, uh, because we're expecting. Oh, you are. Okay. Gotcha. Is this your first one? Um, well, this will be my first more than one, but yes, this will be our first. Okay. Gotcha. And um, 
So you're expecting in, in eight months and you guys need to upsize a, a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell me more about, um, you know, the, what, what, what would you expect from, from a realtor helping you sell a place? Well, to be honest with you, uh, with the house that we're going to be moving into, I know it's going to have to be dependent upon the sale of our current house, and we definitely want to get the most that we can from this, uh, mm -hmm. because you know, going from what we have right now, a, a two bedroom at one two three Main Street, and then all of a sudden we're we're thinking about five bedrooms and kind of in panic mode now, and we definitely want to have enough sta space, and you know, we're just going from my wife and I now to uh, to a much larger family, and um, so. We're definitely feeling it. Okay. And um, gotcha. How many, so do you have an offer in on another home right now, Ryan? No, no, I, I know. We, we've just been looking around online at this point. We just know we need to get this, this, this house on the market and, you know, at least sold or, or at least have an offer in on our house. But, you know, I, I just think that our, our realtor dropped the ball. It didn't seem like um, much was done, you know, besides a couple open houses. Okay. Yeah. And so how many people are making the move to the, this, this next town, Ryan? Um, it would be my wife and I. Okay. All right. And then, um, and you guys are looking for that, that, I think you mentioned a five bedroom home. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Five bedrooms and at least a couple of bathrooms, but the, the bedrooms are going to be the most important. Okay. Why is that? Um, you know, with, with triplets, I, I, I don't know if we want to keep them all in the same room or if we want to try to keep them in different rooms. Gotcha. Okay. So you're having, having triplets and that is quite a, quite a, um, quite a lot there. All right. And, um, is there a certain area of town that you're looking for, for this, for your next home? I know based on my research, I'm looking more in that Centennial School District in South Fargo. Um, it's very close to work and it will uh, decrease our drive times. Plus there's good daycares in the area. Okay. And where do you work, Ryan? Um, that's confidential. Okay. And um, have you guys already talked to the bank about, um, you know, the pre-approval process for the this next home? Yep. Uh, we already have a pre-approved letter, which I know is good for some time yet. So we are ready to uh, to move. So we already have a price point in mind. Um, but it largely is uh, we have enough built up in our in our background. I just don't want to you know be sitting with two mortgages. Absolutely, that's understandable. And um, what is the price point that you're trying to stay under, Ryan? Um, I'm trying to stay personally within uh, at least uh, about two hundred and seventy-five thousand. Okay. All right. And what else is important in there? Your next home. Um. I. 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 I well, it's going to have to have a, a backyard that's going to be fenced. So at some point, we can build build a fence. Okay. All right. So you're looking for a, a, at least a five bedroom, and it sounds like two or three bathroom home under two seventy five, in that uh, Centennial School District, so that you can be close to work and uh as well as the daycare facilities there um did i miss anything there ryan is there any other details that are really important i think that would be um sufficient at this point um what are next steps then for um at least getting can you do things differently than my my my, my prior realtor or how is this going to work um well we we could possibly do things differently is that uh you know, is that a conversation that you want to have right now is just uh, talk to one of my agents and see what we could do to maybe market a little more aggressively? Yes, we, uh, we've we wasted enough time already and it's already been quite a few months and our house still hasn't sold. We need to get this going. Okay. All right, let's stop there. <laughs> uh, uh, Eric, what's your feedback for yourself? Um, well, okay. I, so I was hung up on, you know, why five bedrooms? Uh, and he, he came out with it later. I'm having triplets. So initially what I was thinking is that maybe it was a blended family scenario where he has um, married and there are maybe kids where there's you know split custody or something. They need a lot of bedrooms, but now he's expecting his first one with his new wife, even though maybe she has other kids. Who knows? So I wanted to, wanted to be kind of, I don't know, walk gingerly around that 
Uh, and then he, you know, eventually came out there. He was having triplets. So, um, yeah, that one yeah, took me by surprise there. Obviously, I think he was playing a high C. Um, and I thought Ryan did a good job of doing that. A lot of detail-oriented stuff. Knew exactly what he wanted and why he wanted it. Um, a little more guarded about information. Wasn't going to pry into what he did for a living. If he's pre-approved already with the bank, I don't really, you know, it's not crucial. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Suppose I could have gotten a little more into, I don't know anything about his wife, but then again, as a high C, I don't know if he would be willing to give all that up. And um, yeah, uh, that, that's about it for now. Robbie, what's your feedback then? I'll go. Uh, your microphone's muted, Robbie. Appreciate that. Uh, all right, can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, I want to start with the good things. Um, I think you did a couple things really well, Eric. First off, you made and match really well uh, to the point where it was almost painstaking, um, but it was good. It was on point, and there was points where I had no idea if it was you talking or Ryan. Um, so I think that was really great. Um, <clears throat> secondly, I think you did a fantastic job of taking his words and recapping it back to him, rephrasing it for him. Um, you did this one time when you said, basically, you listed off, this is what I'm hearing you want. Is there anything I'm missing? And I think that's key because what it shows somebody is, hey, I'm hearing you. I understand what you need or want. Now, I think there's two things that I want to point out that are, that are huge growth pieces for you, Eric. Number one um, is, and, and I think this applies to all people in real estate, is sometimes we fall into this trap called the curse of knowledge. And basically what I mean by that is you told Ryan his house expired. And if you're some random person that doesn't work in real estate, you have no idea what that means. So what you have to do is you have to use terms. And, and obviously when somebody's house expired, you can just switch it up and say, well, and, and Ryan, you played with it because you work in real estate. But if you were a random person, uh, you can just change it to, I saw that you were trying to sell your home. And, and unfortunately, it looks like the house didn't sell. So you take expired and, and, and try to think of this not just in this situation because a lot of times people fall into this curse of knowledge trap where someone's not going to know what that means. Secondly, I think there was a huge opportunity for you, Eric, to dig into some pain points with what Ryan was saying about his agent, quote, dropping the ball. That is the moment where you can get a C to complain, to name their frustrations. And when you do that, a couple of things happen. When you get somebody to talk about their frustrations with a prior agent, you're causing a wedge between us and them because you're talking, getting them to talk about their frustrations. But two, you get to learn more about what we shouldn't do. So I think two big things here, avoid the curse of knowledge. And then secondly, you got to dig deeper into the things. When somebody says they dropped the ball, I think you've been like, well, what do you mean, Ryan? Tell me what you mean by or what you mean by dropping the ball. You could have dug dug a little deeper there. So other than that, man, I think your rephrasing, reflecting was great, mirroring and matching was really good. Um, yeah. Honestly, there was a couple times I had no idea if it was Ryan or you talking. That was crazy. Yeah. So my feedback, uh, Eric, was you you missed a couple of opportunities. One, he said the wife and I are moving. He didn't say anything about any other kids. So you had kind of came up with an assumption in your head and you started chasing that assumption. The second thing is he said, my family's going to get a lot larger in eight or so months. And you could have said at that point, well, what do you mean? What, how's your family going to get larger? Um, that's really the only feedback. The thing I liked and the thing I want you to kind of explain is kind of what your whole philosophy is behind expired as well as for sale by owners and how that's different than the traditional approach, Eric, that you do when you're talking to these people. Um, all right. Yeah. So I, I think expireds are one of my weak points that I definitely need to work on. Um, but uh a lot of times I don't always focus on the home that they're trying to sell, but why are they selling it? A lot of times, especially with FISBOs, there are people that are selling because they want to buy and they're not working with anyone on the buy side. They'll have half a dozen agents call them in one day uh, asking them to sell their home and none of them will ask them if, you know, to help them buy. And uh, also half those 
people are um, not eager to sell their home because they haven't found the right home to buy. So if you can set them up with the buyer's agent and find that perfect home, all of a sudden they have a timeline that they want to make and they're going to be a lot more prone to listing with an agent, especially those they already have a good relationship with. Uh, expired, just kind of the same thing, get into the why, the basis of it, uh, what is driving their timeline and, um, you know, why, why are they selling? And now my mic was muted. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, I like how it gives you a little pop-up and says you're muted. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think that was a good call. Um, definitely a couple of really good pointers there. Why don't you give me a call, Eric? Um, treat me like a new uh, registration. Cody's here. Welcome, Cody. Hey, everybody. Sorry, I was at the uh, uh, mission trip meeting. Nice. Ran a little later in plan. All right, I'm about to give Jim a uh, just a call PPC sign up. Ring, ring. Hello. Jim? Yeah, who's this? This is Eric Hegg with uh, Hatch Realty. I saw that you're looking at some homes on our website. Just want to check in and uh, you see if you're just curious or if you're maybe thinking about moving in the future. Yeah, no, I'm just curious. Just looking around. Okay. What, what's what got you curious? Uh, just looking at some, some property values. Okay. Why is that? Uh, you know, just looking at prices, I guess. See what uh, what prices are out there in the marketplace. You know, see what's going on out there in Fargo. Yeah. Are you, are you from Fargo? Are you familiar with the area? Yeah. No, I live here. I have a house here. Yep. Oh, okay. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. So what, what questions do you have about property prices, Jim? Oh, uh, I just kind of wanted to see what the values were. One, uh, yeah. Just see what's out there, I guess, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is that, uh, and, and you know, why are you looking at, uh, at the, the price? Are you thinking about making a move or? Yeah. No, we're thinking of making a move. Yep. yep okay. Yep. Yeah. Who's we? Uh, me and my wife. Okay. Gotcha. When are you hoping to do that by? Uh, you know, probably by summer, I think, Eric, Eric, let me, uh, let me close my door real quick. Just give me okay. one, one second. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm back, Eric. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. What, what's motivating you to think about making a move? Well, Hey, I had to, I had to close the door there. Eric. I'm actually, I'm a, I'm a boss over here at the company. I don't really want a lot of people to know about this. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Um, so I have to have to pretend I'm the normal, happy, happy guy. But uh, stuff's not going well, man. Okay. What? What? Uh, tell me a little bit about that, Jim. What? What's up? Well, we we, uh, we need to downsize. We have a, a big house now, and um, my wife is sick, so we're thinking we need to get on uh, one level just to prepare for that. So. Okay. Um. Gotcha. So what? Uh, you're looking to downsize and get onto onto one level? Is that? Um, are you going to need any sort of accessibility in, in that home as far as? Yeah, I mean, we just need it all on one level. She's going to start chemo here next month, and she doesn't really want anybody to know, so I have to play the <laughs> the jovial guy at uh, at work. But, uh, yeah, she's she's pretty freaked out, so we're thinking we need to sell and, and uh, free up some money and, and get all on one level. Okay. And how are you doing with this, Jim? How are you holding up? uh it's 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 hard wearing two faces you know yeah okay and is she doing i mean is she doing okay with coping with all of this and... yeah, not not really she's got anxiety so i mean she's the type of woman that you know if she's got a charlie horse she thinks she has blood clot and is gonna die so mm -hmm. having having cancer doesn't doesn't really go well yeah wow yeah. and um how long has this been going on, Jim? Uh, she's been sick for about six months, and we just went in a couple a couple weeks ago and got the diagnosis. So, okay. Um, I mean, do you want do you want to talk about that? Do... Nope. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah, I know how hard it can be to uh, to do the the long term care for for a loved one. My uh, my wife was actually bedridden for a, a, about a year with uh, um, Lyme's disease, and it, it can be definitely strenuous. Um, so, are you, is, are you hoping to sell just a, as soon as possible, or? Yeah, I mean we've we've had this place for ten years, so I mean we we bought it for one fifty. It looks like from what I'm seeing, 
you know, stuff's out there for 250 to 300. So, I mean, that would help pay for pretty much a pretty big chunk of chemo and flights and everything. Cause we're going to cancer centers of America out uh, down in Houston, I think it is. So, okay. Right. That's that's where we're looking. We're looking at two places. One's on the East Coast. One's down down in Houston. So it's going to be pretty expensive. Yeah. All right. And um, what are you looking for in in the new place as far as the the one level? Um, how many bedrooms and bathrooms would would you need? Mm, like two bedrooms, two bath. You know, okay. hopefully attached attached parking like a Rambler style. Okay. What else? That's about it, man. Um, I'd like to spend about one fifty to one seventy five. Have it have decent finishes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is a emotional process. So, I mean, I'm pretty drained to be honest. I usually just close my door. I mean, it's kind of nice just to be myself for once, you know. Yeah. Okay. Um. So you're you're downsizing. You got a lot lot going on right now. Um. You mentioned that, that you're at work. Where do, where do you work, Jim? I'm over here at Microsoft. Okay. And um, is your is your wife still able to work, or is that? She'll she'll be on short term and long term disability. Okay, gotcha. She is a teacher, so she 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 has good insurance. We have a cancer policy, but okay. I mean, there's there's been a lot of cancer in my family, so I know it takes a lot of money, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, all right. So, yeah, tell me, tell me a little bit more about your current home, Jim. How many uh, um, bedrooms does it have? How many bathrooms? Uh, it's it's a four three three. Okay. And you said you've owned it about uh, about ten years. It, yep. Okay. And um, are you guys the the only owner of it, or? Yeah. Okay. And uh, have you talked to any other realtors about, you know, getting this this sold and finding that new place? No, we don't. I don't really want a lot of people to know. So I mean, we, you know, I heard you guys' radio ad, so I just kind of went on your website to see what was up. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Well, is that um, you know, is that something that you want to start getting the ball rolling here and and we can have you meet with someone and develop that game plan on uh, you getting that place sold and, and getting you into something that's a smaller one level. Yeah. I mean, we need, we need to get it sold. So, I mean, it'd be good to start to see what, what's out there as far as what we can sell it for. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. We, um, well, we do a, a two-step process here for, for selling and what we would do is have uh Megan, come out and take a look at the place and do it. Right, let's go real quick. Yep. Awesome. All right. So, first, first of all, has anyone ever had a call like that? Because I've had several. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've had ones that shift gears, yeah. Not an illness, but yeah, like a divorce or a job transfer where they're talking and then they step into a room and totally change it up. Yeah. Yeah. Robbie, go ahead, sir. Yeah, I, did not, I did not like that. I made my armpit sweat. <laughs> <laughs> it was good practice. Eric, uh, grade yourself. Give us your feedback. Um, ah, I don't know. That, those combos suck. <laughs> um, yeah, the change caught me off guard because you're high DI to just, you know, still a little more of the uh, – you're still a DI just going through a lot of crap, it seemed like. And, um, you know, it's hard to handle that. Sometimes people – want to talk about it and love talking about it. I've had people totally open up about that and I didn't know where to go with that. I know I'm not supposed to say, do you want to talk about it? And I'm supposed to say something along the lines of, you know, how are you doing with it? Or I don't know. Uh, I'm sure Robbie will provide some insight there, but I, I messed up there when I said, you know, do you want to talk about that? Um, Cause most people are going to say no. And that's not the right way to approach that question. Um, yeah, I don't know. Probably could have dug more into the whole wearing. He's wearing two faces. He's stressed out about putting on this this um, act at work and everything. Um, yeah, that's all. I mean, I, I think it definitely could have done it differently. Uh, it's definitely taken off guard by that switch as well. So sure. 
So here's, um, first off, up until the switch, you were crushing that call. Um, it was really good. And again, your mirroring and matching was on point. You even shifted when you watch this. Um, you'll see that you shifted your energy just like he did. Um, and I think that was really, really good. Um, I think a great question that you asked that a lot of salespeople are deathly afraid of is when you ask, well, how are you doing through this gym? Um, that was something that signaled that you didn't just care about making money, that you cared about how he's doing. Where I think you went wrong was when you said, do you want to talk about it? Because he already was. Mm -hmm. And it actually, and, and Jim, you were playing this role, so chime in, but it, it almost like invalidated it. And it wasn't your intention, but he already was talking about it. And I think those soliloquies where we're asking for permissions, things like that, or do you mind if I ask, get, just get rid of them. Um, people are going to talk and go deeper. And he was. He had just told you that it, his wife had cancer and was going through chemo. So I don't mm -hmm. think you, he, he was talking about it all. Um, now, I think... The, the question here, and I actually think all of these really emotional ones, the best way to wrap up these conversations is simply one question. What can I do to help? Because when you name that, when they've named the pain, they literally start laying everything out that they need. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, you can do this, you can do that. And, and they basically wrap themselves up. And it's just simply asking, well, what can I do to help? And in this case, it could come right after uh, when, when Jim was going through and naming the pain, the frustration he's going through. Uh, well, Jim, what can I do to help? And it, it would be a huge piece. And it, it honestly would just wrap itself up at that point. So those are my, my few pieces of advice. Yeah, and to kind of build on that, that's really the only couple of things I had was, yeah, do you want to talk about that? I already was just felt different to me. He saw it, probably saw my face like <laughs> when I was on the call. Um, the other thing, I think you were trying to connect with them when you were talking about your wife, mm -hmm. um, but it kind of felt a little disingenuous. Yeah. Um, and then, are you guys the only owner on the title? I think you could have just said that a little different way, like, "Oh, so I, it's just you two on the title, or it's just you on the title." I don't even think you need to go there, honestly, in the call. Um, it felt really salesy and completely different vibe that you're giving off from the rest of the call. You thought that didn't go well. I actually thought you did pretty well, dude. Um, you mirror and matched well when I was high, you mirror and matched well when I was low. Um, and you really just kept digging, which was good. Loved it. Any right. that you have, Eric? Mm, no, uh, those calls are always brutal. And I mean, they're far and few between. The only thing that'll really get them better is practice. So um, yeah, what else do we have? All right, any other key takeaways at all? Cody, did you have any feedback? I did not. Everything that uh, I would have had got mentioned. Uh, great job, Eric. I know those are tough calls. Uh, I've had a few, few of those in there. They're always uh, always easy to stumble through. So great job. All right, all right. Hey, and with that, uh, was there anything else that we wanted to do before we wrapped up? Yeah, I mean, Robbie, do we want to talk about this giveaway we're doing? Yeah. So uh, one really cool thing that that obviously we wanted to do. Uh, I, I have the privilege of working over at Hatch Coaching, and uh, we're doing a really cool event um, that we're just calling because we're really. Uh, creative, our <laughs> lead conversion training uh, here March 8th and 9th. And um, we really believe in, in giving. And what we're doing is we're doing a giveaway for a free ticket. And usually the tickets are $799. And all you got to do is go find the the thread that's, that's in the Lead Geeks community on Facebook. Uh, go and comment your email on there. And if you have multiple team members, you can drop it there. But basically, it, it's an event where... For two days, Jim and I are going to talk uh, uh, on the first day a lot about um, the structure, the framework, uh, a lot of the things you're hearing on these calls, but we're going to talk about it for eight to 10 hours. And then day two is we're going to get to you role playing. We're going to get to you practicing. That's one of the biggest things we've learned is we don't just want to teach you the theoretical side. We want to challenge you 
to actually start implementing before you leave. So uh, March 8th and 9th, go check out that uh, that promotion. There's a chance for you to get a free ticket. And, and uh, you know, Jim, uh, feel free to add to, to what we do those two days. Yeah, I mean, we, we want you guys to be practicing. So, I mean, day one, um, we do a lot of the actual discussion on our flow and kind of where we set things up. Day two is all about implementation. So you're going to basically get homework and you're going to go do some role play. You're going to go do some live calls. You're going to come back and talk about it. We're going to talk about what went well, what went bad. Um, I don't want you guys to just come in and sit in a chair for 20 hours and be bored out of your mind. Once you get some takeaways. So I'm going to be there. Robbie's going to be there and Cody is going to be there as well. So Eric, and Ryan, we're at our one in January with me and Robbie. And so now Cody's going to be there. Unfortunately, Pete's out in Seattle. So he's not going to be with us, but maybe uh, later this year. So it's a good event. It helps, you know, basically kind of understand how we do things as well as, you know, increase your conversion. And that's what we had from feedback from our January event is people loved it. So hopefully we'll see you guys there. Yeah, we'd love it. And, uh, It'll be a great opportunity as well because there's there's rainmakers there, uh, so people that are running teams. Uh, there's agents and there's ISAs that are all signed up. So it's not just a great event that we get to put on. It's also a great opportunity to meet other people that are probably going through a lot of the same struggles that that we are in in different markets. Um, but yeah, go check that out. Go find it in the Leeds Geeks Network. If you can't find it, uh, as always, feel free to reach out to to any of us. That's we're just here to help. Cool. Thank you so much, Robbie. Well, from all of us to all of you out there in Leeds Geeks land, I have been Ryan Dorheim and glad to be your uh, MC for today. Take care and we'll talk to you soon.